Hey guys, this is John. All right, this is weird when I'm not able to wave at the camera. <laughs> this is a webcamless recording and a special event I'm playing in. It is Saturday, April 18th at 8 o'clock p.m. U.S. Central Time, and I'm playing in a fun event on chess.com. It's called the I Am Not a, G not a GM Speed Chess Championship. And this is a elimination bracket style match with 16 players, all international masters. And it's played in the style of the, of the actual Speed Chess Championship on chess.com. So you can see the format on the right there. So it's 75 minutes of 5 plus 1 blitz, followed by 45 minutes of 3 plus 1 blitz, and then finally 25 minutes of 1 plus 1 bullet per match. And this is my first match against international master David Proust. So David is someone I know a little bit. I've actually stayed at his house before in the Bay Area of California. Very nice guy. And we were just bantering a little bit back and forth <laughs> prior to this. This match is being broadcast live on the chess.com Twitch, and I'm just locally recording. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to stream this. That would have been fun, but I'm going to be locally recording. And I'm going to break this up into three segments, I think, with the 75 minutes of Blitz being first. And each game counts as normal. Wins are one, draws are a half, and losses are zero. And it's whoever has more points at the end. There is a tie break if we're if we happen to be tied at the end of the bullet segment, but that would be pretty pretty rare. So hope you guys enjoy this, and we are gonna roll here in just a second. We're gonna get automatically matched up. My webcam is actually in use by the official coverage, so uh, my webcam is rolling right now, and they're able to see my face, the Chess.com staff, and also the viewers on Twitch, but I can't. I can't have my webcam in two places, so otherwise I would love to record my reactions. <laughs> All right, and we're about to start. I just got the message. Good luck to David. Hopefully I can advance from this. I didn't do any preparation for this. I've been so busy basically since the coronavirus lockdown started. And this is a fun event anyways, as I said, so not particularly worried. There are prizes. And we're going to roll here any second. There we go. All right. I get white in the first game. Let's open flexibly. Knight f3. Good luck to David. I do have plenty of coffee, if you're wondering. <laughs> and there will be a break in between each segment, so I can go get more coffee, too. All right. Playing a QGD. White side of a QGD. Because I haven't prepared, I'm just going to try to play what I'm comfortable with. But in a match like this, a long match, you got to be flexible. you got to be willing to mix things up if you think there's an opportunity to do so or if you're just running your head against the wall in a certain opening. So, okay, he takes on c4. I think checking is decent here. I've played this position before. So check and then pick up the pawn on c4. Okay, knight d7. Let's play e3. Oh, and I know one thing I want to turn off. Okay, I was just adjusting one of my recording settings. So I don't have to take the pawn back right away on c4. I'm going to try to play bishop take c4 on the next move rather than move my queen. We'll see what David does against that. Bishop e7, quite logical. Uh, let's take... And now assuming he castles, I think I'll drop this bishop back probably to e2. Yeah, just so knight b6 doesn't come with a fork on the queen and the bishop. I have somewhat of a time edge. David is not a super active player these days. Uh, he actually used to be, I believe, vice president for chess.com back in the day. And he has not worked in, for chess.com for a while. He's a family man. I believe he teaches chess. So let's castle here. I think b5 is playable in this position because after bishop takes b5, he would have knight b6 defending the rook. And this is an idea I know about, so I'm not going to take. I'm going to retreat. Going to c2 looks more natural, but I think it actually may make sense to go here. And I want to play knight d2 followed by a4. But yeah, it's a little tactical trick that you have to be aware of in this line. Okay, so let's play knight bd2. 
and he quickly plays c5. Yeah, and I think a4 is about the only way to actually get some play here, so I'm going to do it. Not really aiming for much with this opening, just some position where I'm comfortable. It's the first game. Just feel him out. Okay, queen b6 makes sense. I'm thinking about knight e5 or possibly possibly taking, although it seems a little early to release the tension. I think knight e5 is more so in along the lines of what you want to do here. Um, maybe queen b3, although I think c4 would be a pretty good reply. I wonder if taking here makes any sense. Probably he'll just play bishop takes back. So... A5 comes with the tempo against the queen, although I don't see really what I'm getting with that. So knight e5 is about the best that I see at the moment. I don't want to give all my time back here. I'm just thinking knight e5, rook fd8 if I really have much. I can maybe take b5 at that point, or there may be something against this rook. So let's just play it. Now, if he takes twice and plays knight d5... I will probably trade and, and somehow try to use this d6 square in the future. He does play rook d8. Okay, so I'm thinking perhaps trade on d7 followed by trading on b5. Yeah, let's got to take on d7. And yeah, let's take here now. I don't think he wants to take here. Uh, I could take a6 or maybe, maybe even knight c4. Probably take on a6. So I would doubt if he plays that. He'll probably just recapture. So we're getting mass trades now. Bishop f3 is a move. Bishop takes f6 crosses my mind. Although I don't see what it achieves so much. Perhaps knight b3. But not liking that all that much. Uh, maybe take on c5 first. Just thinking here if I can take c5 and maybe then bishop takes f6. I'm not sure. I have to watch the bishop takes e3 ideas in the near future. If I take on c5, I feel like he'll take with the queen. And I'm maybe not getting much out of that. So I'm just going to play bishop f3 and look to trade. Not better here. In fact, I might be even slightly worse, but it remains to be seen. I might have to accept an isolated pawn on d4. Let's say bishop takes f3. I'm not sure I have anything better than knight takes, pawn takes, and then e takes d4. Should not be that big of a deal, though. He does take. A little tempting to take with a queen, but I'm just not seeing what I really get out of that. So yeah, let's take with the knight. Pawn takes. Plays h6, okay. Let's keep the pin. Now, he could actually play g5, bishop g3, g4, knight e5, and then try to win the d4 pawn, but... That looks kind of risky and possibly not good for him in a, in a blitz game. But I wouldn't be surprised if the computer likes that or something. <laughs> Just the most greedy continuation. But I wouldn't mind playing down a pawn when his king is weak and we are going to be get, getting lower on time here soon. Ooh, isn't that just a blunder? It's a weird move. Don't know what I'm missing here, but I think he just blundered that. Unless that was a mouse slip. It's about the only thing I can think of. Okay, queen d5. Now, do I take d7 first or bishop takes f6? Doesn't matter a whole lot. Let's take this way first. Okay, queen d3. Now just got to win up an exchange. Queen d5. Let's bring the rook over. 
menace some rook c8 business. I am controlling the h7 square, so that's annoying for him. Maybe I can think about taking, because if bishop takes, there's rook c5 as a possibility. But I also might feel like playing a move such as h3 first. It goes g5. All right, just drop back. Okay, I have rook c7 here for one thing. Uh, looks pretty good. Probably no reason to second guess myself here. On queen d8, maybe just queen takes b uh, queen takes b5. Could play queen e8, but he's definitely getting pushed back now. Uh, maybe rook b8 at that point. Plays there. Mm -hmm. Just thinking for a second if this this is anything anything to be concerned about, but I take and I can block with the queen on f1. Importantly, so yeah, let's take. I have rook d7. I have rook b7. Looking for rook b8. Just thinking what would be the best way to end his resistance here. I think rook d7. Just really clinical. Queen a8, queen b8, for instance. Yeah, I don't really need to, to risk anything here. The John Bartholomew motto. No reason to risk anything. <laughs> yeah, just go for the queen trade. It's forced. Yeah, I'm up an exchange plus pawn. Makes sense to get rid of some material. Now on bishop here, I can play bishop e5. Mm, could take on d5, just swap everything and win. But he resigned. Okay. All right, so chalk that one up. Good start. I didn't play very well out of the opening. Didn't have a good position, but uh, he blundered the fork. That's pretty much what it came down to in that game. Let's play a Sicilian. We're going to keep the Scandi in reserve for now in case we need it. I'll play a Khan. I usually play either Khan or Classical Sicilian. So Khan is flexible. I like it. It's a... Uh, a good flexible weapon for those of you who maybe want to ease into the Sicilian but are intimidated by the sheer amount of theory in some of these lines. Because some of the main line Sicilians are quite dense when it comes to theory. So let's go queen c7. I'll play knight f6 here. Sometimes I play an early bishop c5 in these lines and try to attack my opponent's knight on d4, but those lines... Uh, have been debunked a little bit. I, I tend to play it nowadays with just leaving the bishop back and largely just going to e7, usually after d6. Okay, he's thinking here. Just like he did last game, thinking in the opening. Not a whole lot going on. I mean, knight c3 would be standard. A lot of times white plays king h1 in preparation for f4. David does like to attack for the most part. Like, he is uh, a good attacking player. So I expect some of these games to get pretty sharp. Play d6, knight bd7, b5, bishop b7 if allowed. Very standard Sicilian stuff. Now let's bring this out. Okay. One thing I'm always tempted to do is play h5 in these setups. I kind of like that move. I might wait, though. Let's play b5 first. And just look to get the bishop to b7. He hasn't played a4 to stop me from doing this, so 
I think this makes sense. By the way, I, me I mentioned this is a bracket style tournament. So 16 players. I am the number one seed somehow. I think they take a average of maybe your FIDE ratings and your chess.com ratings, or possibly just chess.com ratings. You can see my blitz rating is quite a bit higher than David's. But yeah, I was a little surprised when I saw that. Also, it's possible to bet on this tournament. <laughs> I think there's some European sites that allow betting on it. So <laughs> if, if that's your thing, you might want to look into that. Plays a3. I'm happy to see that move because you know, he's stopping b4, but it's not the type of move that's going to give black too many issues, I think. Now, I could play bishop e7. Also, again, I'm really often tempted by, by h5 in these setups. I think it's a pretty nice move if you can play it. Now, let's play bishop e7 first, though. Bide our time for one move. If he plays g4, I think then I'll play h5. Okay, he plays rook e1. Yeah, this is a fundamental decision for black. Like, do you castle and allow potential play on the king side, or do you play this, which I'm going to do, <laughs> especially in blitz? I've got a minute and 20 second time advantage. Let's try to make it a little sharper. The points up for grabs in these games are all the same, so you can see why... There's a decreasing amount of time at each time control. This being the longest one, you're not going to get in as many 5 plus 1 games as 3 plus 1 or 1 plus 1. But every game matters. So I'm looking for an g 4 If white plays h3, I'll play h4 and try to angle in here. It's often the, the plan. It's just a nice way to slow white up. You know, h3, h4, and try to control the g3 square. Plays queen g3. Interesting. So he's almost inviting me to play this move. Or knight g4. I mean, I feel like knight g4 should almost be an automatic move for me here. Because he really could struggle with his dark squares after that. Let's do it and ask questions later. Main point being, if he moves his bishop back here or here, I'm going to get queen b6 and e5 in. I think he's just going to lose a knight. So, yeah, this is already kind of nasty for him. I'd probably play king h1 if I were white, just to hedge against anything happening on this diagonal, but I, I wouldn't be happy about it. Black takes on e3. Yeah, he does play that. So, yeah, I can take e3. I don't think I'm worried about queen takes g7 because he has I have bishop f6. So, yeah, let's take that bishop. This is a pretty nice piece to capture. See what way he recaptures. He's down to a minute 16 already. Tempted to go here because queen takes g7 again is met by this. But it does give him uh, potentially the h3 square. I could also just castle in this position. But you know what? Let's play h4. Let's do this. Someday I want to play h3. That's my point here. So on queen g4, I might just castle and say, you know what, let's spice this up when I have the two bishops and you are getting dangerously low on time. Whoa, knight takes e6. Okay, I was not expecting that move whatsoever. Did not even cross my mind. Again, he's a tactical player. He likes this stuff. Is this good, though? I mean, I see multiple options. Of course, I can take the knight. I guess his idea is to, to play queen check. Looks like he's trying to wrest the initiative away, which is understandable. I'm also looking at queen takes c3 here. A little more complicated, but possibly just good as well. Hmm, yeah, interesting. I mean, I think taking is probably best. Queen g6 check, king d8, and basically ask him how he's going to get compensation there. Yeah, let's take. I think that's a momentum type of change or move that he's trying. He takes on g7, interesting. 
Yeah, I really thought bishop f6 again here would be the answer. So yeah, let's do it. Guarding the rook, he'll check. Probably king d8 now. Could also maybe play king e7, but I'm a little worried about this move. If he tries to just mass open the position. So let's go here. And I think now he kind of has to play this and take his chances. But I've got this h3 move lurking, which really might be nasty for him if I get a chance to play it. h3. Rook takes h3. Rook takes h3. He can take on f6. I could also maybe open... Um, Okay, well, let's think about this. If h3, rook takes, rook takes, queen g8, what's going on there? Hmm, yeah, getting a little sharper. I guess rook takes h3 might be a issue. Okay, now I'm getting a little low on time. Getting messy for sure. Really want to get that h3 move in at some point. All right, let's take. And now I'm going to go here, I think. I'm just going to safeguard my bishop, and I still want this at some point. But I had to find a lot of time to do that, so he seems like he's kind of succeeded in throwing me off guard a little bit. Rook f7, okay. I mean, knight takes e5, looks pretty good here. Don't actually see what the issue is with that, because I'm going to come back here and take this guy, which will defend my rook on h8, so that might have been a bad move on his part. Queen takes e6. Yeah, let's take. And I'm going to go for h3, I think, after this. He's thinking about something here. Maybe knight d5, but it feels like it's too little too late. Yeah, now let's instantly play this move. Kind of has to roll the dice here, I think, with knight d5. Yeah, but let's take check. I can take your next move, and I, I see rook f8 in the end. So yeah, this is going to be over. All right. Yeah, that was a fun one. Not sure I responded best to knight takes e6. That move really caught me, caught me off guard, but um, yeah, it was something I was able to cope with, fortunately. All right, so let's play... Hmm. Let's play knight f3 here. And we get this again. Okay. Yeah, I didn't like what I got last time, so let's just stick with something a little more mainline. Played bishop g5, which, yeah, is not too challenging. All right, let's play bishop g5 here now. This is a little sharper and... I don't know how well-versed David is on these lines. Um, I certainly haven't looked at them for a while. So he does play the capture on c4. Let's play a4. I don't want to go into the main line with e4, e5. Bovenik variation. So we're going we're gonna to sit back and just play old man chess here. a4 stopping b5. That being said, guys, I'm trying to force myself not to play old man chess. So you might have seen in my recent title Tuesdays, I'm making more of an effort to play e4 as white, which I think I will play this match. Hmm. Okay, he's opened things up. Yeah, this is now like a Rogozin Vienna variation, I think it's called. Um, let's castle. 
I'm assuming he takes d4, I can play e5 or maybe knight b5, one of the two. Possibly knight b5. Or, no, let's play e5 first. Kick the queen. Maybe I can get this square, which looks kind of nice. Mm, he may just go back to d8, though, which kind of covers everything. Goes to e7 instead. Okay. All right, let's take with the knight. Maybe queen takes there, followed by queen g4 would have been better. I don't know. Because now if knight e4, he does have rook d8. So I got to be a little wary of that. Let's play queen g4. And hopefully my pieces can funnel in. Rook d1, knight e4. Really like to focus on that f6 square and a potential attack. Rook e1 if necessary to protect this pawn. He could play queen c5 here, trying to attack both those guys, but I don't know how appetizing is. I guess that is. I guess I have knight f3 if I want to bail out. Okay, let's take back. And bishop d7. All right, so a little bit of a trade there. f4, f5 kind of suggests itself if we want to play for the attack. Problem here is he's going to get coordinated immediately on the next move with knight c6. So I feel like I need to cause him some trouble before he does that. Like I'm even thinking maybe this move. Although he could play queen c5 against that. I think I'm going to go here. I don't like my bishop on c4. It's undefended. It's a potential target. Maybe I can go queen e4. Try to create some play against this king. But black has a compact position, so he's relatively free of weaknesses. If he can just coordinate and defend, which is what I would do here, he might be all right. Plays bishop c6, interesting. So that stops queen e4. I feel like now f4, f5 is probably just the best plan. Yeah, let's go for this. I'm gonna make this complicated. Knight d7, I think I'll play this move. And on queen c5, maybe rook e3. And I like the potential avenue I have for the attack here. I'm a little lower on time. Pretty even, though. Yeah, I really like this possible plan. I mean, I could have played that right away, actually. But I feel like f4 is kind of nice because... Not only do I threaten f5 in some instances, but I also control the g5 square. So he can't just stick his queen there. And I defend this pawn over protection. So knight d7, I'll play this. I don't care about the a4 pawn at all. He can have that. Bishop d5, hmm. Uh, he wants knight c6. So he must still want to get that there. That's questionable, though. It looks very slow. I mean, f5? f5 suggests itself. Uh, take, take. Queen takes e5, I take h6. Honestly, though, I think just play this. Throw the move back at him, and f5 is coming with e5 guarded. If he plays knight c6 here, f5, knight takes d4. I think I just play f6 anyways. Ah, but I'm allowing queen g5 again. Mm, that might have been a little sloppy on my part. Yeah, I forgot that when I play this move, queen g5 is possible. Okay, I can play queen h3 if I want to keep the tension, try to play for an attack. There is still rook e3 to g3, but yeah, maybe I missed an opportunity to do something better there. But all right, we continue. 
Guarding G2. Let it be known, I just passed up a queen trade, guys. <laughs> I hope Danny and, and Robert are talking about that. Or not Danny and Robert. Uh, Danya and Robert. They are the official commentators for this match. Okay, rook d8. So I'm looking at this. Maybe f6, but it might be favorable to keep the tension for a moment. Ah, ooh, I got to be careful. This runs into bishop takes g2. Nasty. Bishop takes g2. Ugh. As soon as I put something there. Okay, so I could play f6, but f6 somehow... f6 g6 doesn't look too hot. It's hard to, to see how I get through after that. Yeah, I think rook d8 might be a good move. I'm going to play rook f2. I think I got to guard g2 a little bit better. And I want to keep the tension. I'm not really thrilled about exchanging anything yet. Like taking on e6. Somehow that did not seem right. Although I admit I didn't fully calculate that, but... It doesn't seem correct to go for this pawn. There's just a lot of looseness in the position. So I, I want this. Okay. Rook e8. Alright. Now let's put him under pressure. So yeah, the whole reason I'm doing this is so I can take with the rook. If he takes there. Which I think was his plan, I presume. Okay, and now lots of options. I mean, rook g rook g three just continue. Yeah, let's do that. If he checks here, rook c one or rook f one rather. And I got all my pieces in the game now. Bearing down on him. If queen here, I can play queen takes f five. He's really going to be on the run soon. Also, knight takes f5 possible. He takes on c3, okay. Yeah, now probably just knight takes f5. Because my knight is loose, I don't think I need to calculate any uh, major major attempt there to, to win something. Okay, I'm thinking take king f8, queen takes h6. Just looking to see if there's any uh, possible way for him to disrupt that. I think definitely take here. And now queen g3 or queen takes h6. I think queen takes h6 should be winning pretty comfortably. Because there's so many discoveries possible here. And I'm guarding this square, importantly. Also, if he, let's say he checks on c5 and bishop takes g2, I have rook takes g2 discovery. So, should not be possible for him to, well, this is checkmated one. There's also rook g8, rook queen g7, but uh, checkmated one is pretty good. All right, so I win that one. Rematch. Yeah, that was a fun game. Those positions can be really, really tense where there's like a small window of time where you need to attack. And I tried to use that window to, to uh, my best ability, but I actually think somewhere in there I, I could have improved. Not sure exactly where, but... Okay, let's play knight f6. If e5, there's queen a5 check, so no worries there. Uh, let's go queen c7. Tempted to play h5 again. Some h5, h4 business. Because he seems willing to mix it up. Let's do it. He hasn't committed his knight to c3, which is interesting. 
much more used to seeing g3, bishop g2 with the knight coming out. So, okay, e5 is certainly a concern here. Therefore, let's play d6. At least now with his rook on e1, it's less likely he's going to go for uh, f4, f5. Okay, bishop e7. I guess I'll go for the same setup for now. Uh, b5 is going to be harder to achieve because he does have e5. So I might have to take my time in terms of that maneuver. Arguably, I should have put the knight on c6. It's hard to say sometimes. Another theme I need to watch out for is the knight coming here. So after a trade, white trying to open the file towards my bishop on e7. Knight d5 would be premature, though, because his bishop on g5 would be hanging. So he plays queen e2. All right. Yeah, I think he really wants knight d5 soon. And the problem with h5 now is that uh, it's going to be hard for me to justify castling. Because <laughs> I've weakened myself. But then again, I mean, stranger things have happened. I've castled in worse positions than this. All right, I just talked myself into it. Let's castle. <laughs> that didn't take long. All right, let's go rook here. B5, B4 on the way. Yeah, I just I didn't need I need to escape this diagonal. So now we have like a relatively normalish Sicilian position where I played this. So definitely regretting that, but it's water under the bridge. Let's play b6. Be interesting to play knight c6, take e5, but I don't think I should fear that really. I look too solid for that to work. So I'm just trying to get my bishop here, create an opponent for him. If he plays bishop f3, I'll probably play g6 just to reinforce. Plays f4. Okay, so with that move, you got to watch e5 at all times because this bishop can be loose. No doubt. So rook e8, I think, would make sense. Let's do that. Kind of a typical Sicilian move. Mm, maybe I'm really opening myself up for knight c6, though, after e5. Like, e5 might just be strong now. Yeah, knight c6 could be a serious issue. I just missed that. He plays it. Okay. Now I got to scramble. I think. Okay, let's take. Mm. Yeah, this was not well played on my part. Because if I play knight g4 as I intended, he can trade and knight c6, I think, just kills me. So I might have to play knight d5 here, which is, like, not <laughs> what you want to do. It's honestly kind of a pathetic move I'd have to play. Unless I can take e5 twice and play knight g4, but uh, it's not looking good. Okay, I'm just going to play this quickly. I think it's a bad position, so let's just play it and see what happens. One continuation I'm kind of worried about is if he plays knight takes d5, pawn takes d5, and then e6, I'm going to be scrambling for a defense. Might just be busted. So thematic, just opens the position right down the file towards my king. My king is looking absolutely bare right now. So at least I played this move fast. But he doesn't miss these things. He's quite good with these tactics. So I, I expect him to play this move. And 
I will try to scramble for a defense. Problem is nothing I'm looking at here looks any good. <laughs> Ooh, he plays bishop f4, okay. So maybe a bit of a break. Still looks awfully good though. I gotta get coordinated. Queen c5, maybe? Yeah, e6 is really nasty. It's hard to get off the file, so that's why I'm thinking queen c5, or uh, bishop b7. Yeah, let's play bishop b7. And if e6, I'll go here, I guess, but he can, mm, can take f7, take h5. I feel like I was thinking something else too, but I, no, nah, no, nah, this is just bad. This is just losing position. Must be, must be losing. Have to play king f8 to keep this guarded. There's a number of moves here. Knight e6, for instance, looks pretty crushing. My only hope is if he overthinks this or slips up. That's still a little messy, but... It's one thing I'm trying to work on. If I have a bad position and I know it, just try to play fast. You know, there's, you're not going to get anywhere having a bad position and also being down on time. <laughs> that usually doesn't work out so well. So at least I have swindling chances in a messy position. It looks like he's trying to find a forced win here. I think if I were white, I probably would have just played at 96. Yeah, so let's take take here, I suppose. Kind of have to. Can play rook f1. It's probably good. Yep, plays it. Okay, let's go here. At least now if rook takes f4, maybe I can play queen takes f4. Let's play this fast, which he might have missed. And now here... Oh no, he has that. Okay, nice. That's nicely played by him. I didn't see rookie seven. I got a take. And. Hmm. Okay. Let me try to plan out something tricky here because that was very well spotted on his part. I'm thinking king e6 take rook g8, but my bishop hangs. That's the problem. So I might need to play like king d6 takes knight e4, something along those lines. Ah, but then queen e5. Okay, so maybe knight e7. Yeah, let's try this. I mean, he could probably just run his h-pawn here, but at least it's something. At least it's something we can attempt. Try to get my king to safety. Somehow. But yeah, looking pretty dead. Now he can just sack if he wants. Okay. Well, he has hardly any time. Uh, let's check. Got to hope for a flag here. Mm hmm. Oh, and he flagged. Oof. 
I tried to cut off his king to create problems. I feel bad for a little bad for him there because <laughs> I was obviously dead to rights. Just h8 queen and he can start escaping. So, but hey, there is one second increment. However, I do know from recent experience, having been very dirtily flagged, that one second increment does not mean that you're going to be immune from losing on time. <laughs> so there's that. I mean... Oh, did I forget to hit rematch? One second. All right, let's play e4. We'll play into a Sicilian this time. Yeah, that is, that's pretty brutal. Let's play bishop g5. I think David knows this theory quite well. But let's see what we get. I was just looking at some crazy game in this line the other day, correspondence game. Don't really remember how it goes in some of these variations, but it's fun. The positions are wild. So I'm playing kind of a standard way. Bishop d3 looking for rook he1 coming. The reason, Another reason I played bishop e4 in that last game, by the way, is because you know in time pressure, he's probably thinking I'm going to check him there. But that's too obvious. You got to go a level deeper. I'm not going to check. I'm going to take away his escape routes for his king. <laughs> that's that's the key thing. You take away the escape routes. You don't check them right away. Okay, this is a standard theoretical position. H6. What is up with that? Is that not inaccurate? Can't I take? And the bishop takes take here. I thought this was a thing. And on knight takes, I play e5. I thought this was supposed to be good for white. I think it is. I think in my next black game, I'm just trying to plan out what I'm going to do, assuming he plays e4. I think I'll switch to classical Sicilian. Let's see what he has in mind against that. Played two cons already. But for now, let's focus on this. I think we're about halfway through, a little over halfway through the first time control here. So a point here is if he takes, I take with the D knight, I'm on his queen, I'm on D6, and that tends to work well for white. If you can pick up three pawns in this scenario and you take D6 with check, E5 is coming. It's not going to be winning immediately for, uh, for white or anything, but from what I remember, it's usually quite good. So, okay, he castles, makes sense. Thinking about e5 here, even. But that might be a little too crazy. Slash unnecessary. So maybe just take on d7. Hmm, e5 pawn takes. Yeah, I'm not sure how that's going to work out. Too many pieces hanging. I don't like that. Let's just take. I don't want to lose time in moving my bishop back. There wasn't even a great square for the bishop, I think. So we'll just take and probably look for an attack somehow. Maybe g4. g4, g5, definitely possible. Uh, also still thinking about ways to get in e5. Just not quite sure yet. Maybe queen g3 first. Now let's play g4. Let's just attack. Maybe now this move. Kind of allows me to do this and this. Oh, but he can take, take, and play queen b6. Ugh, that's not good on my part. I saw queen b6, knight b3, but not take right away. That might just be good for him. I have to give up b2. Okay, so luckily for me, he didn't find that. All right, well, let's go back here. Still think I'm looking for e5 most likely, but maybe I can prep it, maybe even h4 first. If he takes c3, I'm not opposed to trading. 
Bishop takes, queen takes. Queen trade should be quite good for me. I'm up a pawn. D6 is weak. So he brings that over. Makes sense. And now rook e3 seems like a pretty solid reinforcement type move. But now we got to worry about the timing of things a little bit, like certain counterplay. Um, he's probably going to be playing a5 in the near term. So on rook d3, a5, I just want to make sure I have sufficient counterplay because I'm going to be a little slow, it, it seems, if I go for h4 followed by g5. So it'd be nice to play something like e5 straight away. Hmm. Yeah, he's got definite compensation here. Maybe I shouldn't even bother to uh, defend it. I think I should just go for the attack. Yeah, because if he takes twice on c3, I get d6 in the end. So I think it's correct to just go for it here. I think we spend a tempo like this, a5 coming. It's another one of these positions where every move matters. So I want to get in g5 before he gets in a4. Two knights versus two bishops, I'm up a pawn. Okay, let's take. He might move his queen. Queen b6 or queen b7, one of the two. Oh, rook c4, man, I didn't even think about that move. I'm missing a lot of moves. Really a lot. Like, that should have been an obvious move, and I just flat out missed it. Not promising. Not promising, guys. <laughs> So now if I go to d2, I lose on c2. So I'm thinking queen a5 or queen d3, one of the two. Maybe queen a5. I mean, I feel like I got to kind of stabilize things now. I mean, I know he gets to take with check, but... We always have d6, <laughs> d6 being weak. He's thinking probably whether to trade queens or take c2 first, but it shouldn't matter a whole lot. If here, I think I'm not going to get mated. Control the dark squares too well, but... Should he trade queens or keep them on? I mean, instincts say keep them on, but the thing is, this pawn is weak, so he has to reckon with me playing rook takes d6 if he plays, you know, let's say queen, queen b7. Could play queen c6. It's kind of inviting this move, so I wasn't sure if that was good for him or not. Uh, possibly this is just good for me. I mean, maybe I should just play it. I guess queen c5, I guess. So it's not a disaster. I don't know about that decision, though. Knight d4, queen c5. I mean, he's not losing right away, but maybe I can play queen b4 first or something. Maybe that's a little smarter. Let's do that. I'll try to play knight d4 at a moment when I can actually pivot back and defend my queen in the process. And I'm going to bother him on this square, see what he does. Another possible time scramble coming up. So yeah, if he plays d5, for instance, like knight d4. Should win an exchange. Back rank's always a little weak, but no biggie. At least now. <laughs> I have C1 covered. Okay, he's getting low. So this is my time to strike, potentially, if I can capitalize here. Okay, if I just take on D6 with the queen, 
What does he have up his sleeve? Rook c1, knight takes c1. That's not working for him. So yeah, let's take. I think he has to trade and move his bishop somewhere. Wait, what? Really? Okay, that's creative. So take and this rook is defended is his point. Got it. Okay. Probably good. Okay. Endgame looks a little better for him, so I might take my chances in this time scramble middle game. I'm just debating where to put my queen if I do. Let's pull it back. I'm going to try to keep queens on board and attack. Let's play f5. e5 was hanging, but I like this a little bit better. Restricts his bishop. Uh-huh. Okay, let's play rook over. Okay, now he's possibly semi-pinned. Okay, interesting. Okay, who's better here? Hard to say. Let's try to run my pawn. Might be a draw. Okay, I pick up this pawn. Still looking very drawish, though. Ooh. Don't know where my knight is going. Let's try not to lose on time, basically. Yeah, this is a complete draw. I'll just offer a trade this draw, so yeah. We'll play it out till stalemate. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, the position was looking a little dicey for me in the middle game. Felt like I maybe could have done something different, but you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna nitpick that result. End game, I don't know. I don't know if that end game was winning. Probably not. Those tend to be very drawish. All right, so we're going to get this classical Sicilian system, bishop d7. I played this a bunch of times. After f4, which is the most aggressive move, black can play b5 or even um, h6. I played both. Let's play h6 here. Go b5 now. He's playing the f3 version, which is also pretty potent. Some sharp stuff possible. Okay, I had this in an OTB game last year, and I did not handle it well. I think I played e5, which is a sketchy move. Let's play bishop b7. Okay, and... Let's go to, hmm, knight, yeah, let's go to knight d7. Pivot the knight. A little bit of jockeying here. Okay, plays g4. Play queen c7, and I think I'm going to go for uh, knight e5, knight c4. Keeping my bishop here for the time being. I'm just not sure if I want to put it on e7 quite yet. And let's see where he puts his bishop. I'll be curious. 
yeah, he might do the same, kind of lay low for the time being. Let's play knight e5. So at least now I have knight c4 always in the air. We're an hour into the play now, so this game and maybe one more game is all we're going to get at this time control. I'm enjoying this. This is a lot of fun. Games have been messy. Pretty sharp. I've definitely benefited from some outright blunders by him and you know the time management blunder too. Losing on time in a winning position, but it's part of Blitz. Okay, I'm going to play bishop e7 now. I think it's time to do this. Get developed. I wonder if he's looking at bishop takes b5, kind of like what I did to him at the last game. Here, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. Okay, now he brings this out, and I think it might be time for knight c4 if I'm going to play that move. Let me just think which way I want to recapture, assuming I play it. Usually you'd recapture with the queen, so I think I'm going to go with that. Pawn takes, he can play c3, and it's really hard to get through against that, so let's, let's take with the queen. Now, he's going to be trying to break through with these pawns, no doubt. Okay, so takes. I maybe take h1 and play g6. It's a little uncomfortable, though. Because I'm underdeveloped, but I think this might be all right. Because I really don't want to see g6 is the thing. So let's do this. And yeah, we'll play like that. I mean, if he checks, I think I can play king d7. It's not, not too bad. And there's this somewhat tender f1 square. So I wouldn't at all be surprised to see him play b3 here. Kick me back and just make luft for his king. I think that's a wise thing to do. Yeah, plays that. Let's bring this back. So we're in a middle game where we both have plenty of time at the moment. Nice departure from the norm. <laughs> okay, I'm thinking rook c8. Is he lining up any tactics right now? None that I see. So yeah, let's go rook c8. Got to watch this, though. He, he dropped that on me in game two. Or I was at a moment when I was not at all looking at it. Yeah, if I were to play bishop f8, that would run into knight takes e6, but there's no reason to do that unless he checks or something. I feel okay here. I mean, outwardly, it looks like he has the initiative, but at the moment, I don't see too many problems for me. And I have the two bishops. It's just question about my king safety but there's no pawn breaks to speak of that he can he can really do some damage with i have a minute edge on the clock now so always nice I'm gonna pour myself some coffee shout out to mjb coffee powering me through this match mjb good when it should if you don't know what mjb coffee is you got to tune into my twitch channel I thought briefly about not recording this because David is not recording, so it is somewhat of a disadvantage for me, self-imposed. But it's so much fun, and you know there are prizes, as I said at the outset of this match, but I'm really treating this as a fun kind of training tournament as well, and I want to share this with you guys. We're all on lockdown right now. It's cool that Chess.com has been putting this on. Big shout-out to Chess.com. So. Okay. Places rook back now. I don't know that I should spend too much time debating between the two moves here, king d7 or bishop f8. My instinct says king d7, so I'm just going to trust it. He can repeat if he wants. 
don't think I have a whole lot else better than repeating. I mean, queen c3 probably just takes here. I don't really see what I am doing with that move. So yeah, let's go back. Now I could try to play on bishop f8. The thing about bishop f8 is I might be courting some sort of problems if he goes queen h2. That would be the move I'd worry about. I think the match situation is good, and he's playing for the win. Okay. I admire that. Yeah, he's kind of got to make something happen, so totally get that decision. But now, queen c3 is certainly catching my eye. I don't think I should take first and then play queen c3 because then he has... Well, actually, no, he doesn't have a check. Okay, I was thinking he had a check for some reason there. That might be strong, but he, in fact, does not... Okay, so let's think. I'm pretty sure I'm going to play this move. I just don't know if I want to take first on h8 or play it right away. Playing it right away might be trickier and better. I'd also like to maintain a time edge if possible. Yeah, let's play it right away. Just looks a little awkward for him. If he takes on c8, I can take either way. Probably take with the king, although that allows him that check. So maybe take with the bishop. It's even crossed my mind to do this, but that, that seems a little too much. Although it'd be interesting. Bishop takes g5 after that. No, that can't work. Let's take it with the bishop. I just don't want him to check on h8. I'm going to place queen d2. All right. This end game looks, if, anyone, if anyone's better, it's probably me slightly. Maybe e5 followed by d5. Got my bishop on a good square, so perhaps something. Yeah, let's play e5 and d5. Probably play knight g3. Hmm, knight c3. Okay. Because in the end game, I feel like this g5 pawn could be quite weak for him. <sighs> could play e4 and then go after it. Let's go for this right away. Take. If I take, I can catch him. I'm in the square of the pawn. Okay, and here I can just take, right? That should be just winning. Because if he plays c6, I was playing bishop a5 to catch him. Yeah, so this is a straight up win. All right. Yeah, I'm happy with that game. That game was quite reasonable, I think. I don't know why I'm saying quite. Please excuse that. <laughs> I'm saying quite an awful lot. Just stop now. Okay, we get this again. Huh. Let's play something a little bit different. Play bishop e3. We're going to make this interesting. Rook g1. Rook g1, g4, g5. I've occasionally liked to attack like this in the Sicilian. and For sure, it's risky. But it's also a lot of fun. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Okay, let's play a3. 
this might ultimately look like a somewhat normal-ish uh, Night Orf, but I'm trying to leave my F-Pawn back so I can try to go F4 in one move. That's my goal here. Just some caveman-style chess, you know. Now maybe Queen F3. Since he is ready to take on E4. So let's let's do this. Just got to notice that there's under nine minutes left in this segment, so this could be our last game. I don't see a countdown timer. It's not visible to us as players, but they're notifying us in the Zoom call that we're on when we're uh, about to be done with the time control. Okay, let's castle. Always nice to have your rook lined up with your opponent's queen, even if there's a bunch of congestion pieces in the way. Okay. Think about maybe bishop d2 here, although that would be a really weird move. King b1 would be the obvious thing to do. Let's do king b1. Try not to overthink it. I'm a little out of, outside of my comfort zone in this opening. I played something experimental. So... Just want to play fast and uh, try to try to whip up an attack. One move you really have to worry about here, though, is um, Rook B8. If they get a chance to play that, that can be. pretty bad for you sometimes if you're white. Okay, I'll play knight a2. Kind of ugly, though. Maybe I should have played g5 first just to kick his knight back, but... I was trying to find a way to uh, delay g5 and maybe get him to commit to this and then attack. But okay, now he plays queen a4. Interesting spot for the queen. But he's just threatening e4. So I feel like I almost have to play the knight back here and let's see what, what he does. Queen a5 or queen b4. He goes back. Yeah, now I could implement this small improvement of mine. Let's try it. Let's go g5 first. He's going to play knight d7. Hard to say who this is favoring. Okay, now let's do this again. If queen a5, I don't actually think I'm going to play b4. Because, yeah, it goes queen b6, also possible. Maybe here now I can play knight b3. Maybe that's not a bad time to do this. Sort of taking my pieces away from more natural attacking positions, but I really got to make an effort to uh, stop him from attacking me. Okay. 95. Hmm. Queen g3 or maybe taking c5, but I don't like that. Let's play queen g3. I guess he's going to take here and then bishop takes e4. He is pinned, so this knight can't move. So if I play this, this. 
least he can't move that. But yeah, losing the, the pawn on e4 looks a little weird for me. He is underdeveloped, but then again, I'm playing like quite coffee house style here, I think. <laughs> Maybe take here. Bishop takes, I take it this way. I gotta try to coordinate. Maybe rook over to b3 now. Play for an attack. Oh, he can just take. Of course. Huge blunder. Very bad blunder. I'm like signaling how bad that blunder is on the video right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. I'm gonna resign that. Did I resign? Yes. Not even an in-between move there. Alignment problem. I think we can get one more game in at this time control. I'll play the same line. Yeah, outright blundered. Uh, in fairness, though, to me, I, I had a bad position, and I think I wasn't managing that well. So adjustment time. Avoid that opening. Yeah, just don't play that. <laughs> he seems very content to stick to uh, this line. I'll play this again. I played bishop b7 in the first game, but I don't think it really matters. Let's see where his improvement is here. Mm -hmm. Go here again. I think he played g4 last time. Some combo of g4 and king b1. Next white game, I think I'm going to go back to d4. Maybe even c4. Just keep it positional. Look for tactics if possible, but I'm doing well when I, when I play solid and just wait for things to develop. Don't have to mix it up every game. He's thinking a lot here. Again, I feel like he's looking at this move. <laughs> but isn't pulling the trigger on it. Maybe I can somehow conserve bishop e7 this time around, but honestly, like, last time was fine. I feel like the position I got, even though it looked weird to give him the h-file, like, that sometimes happens in this line. Okay, he's playing different this time. Queen g2, interesting. Definitely interesting. My eye is drawn towards d5 right now to open the center. Maybe decent. Let's go for it. Center opening. Also the name of an actual opening, but in this case, just an operation to open the center. Queen g2 looks very awkward. I mean, sometimes it's going to help him play g5, g6, but you know, if your opponent plays on the wing like that, typically you should respond by playing the center. Okay. So I think he's going to try to close it down. After I move the knight, he's going to take or, yeah, somehow close the center of the board. So let's think if I can keep the tension somehow. It'd be nice to, but it might be tough because... Yeah, it might be tough. Let's do this, and I might take with the D-pawn. I'm going to capture this way. Maybe menace C3. I've got the long-term pressure here. I could even castle queen side if I get a chance. So maybe not so bad. I mean, castling queen side is not the craziest thing to do here at all. Not at all. Let's do it. King. I mean, if I castle on the queen side, the king's going to be in the line of fire of all these pawns. 
thing I like about this position for me is he's probably going to be saddled to this pawn for a while with at least one of his pieces, queen, or if he moves this bishop, the rook. I have c3 if I want it, but I'm not going to go for that yet. Let's see if he wants to play that, which will weaken this diagonal and make a bishop takes e4 type move even more potent in the future. Nah, I like this position. Plays his bishop back, all right. Maybe now c3. Be c3, b3, bishop c5. Something like that. Although c3, arguably, I got to watch my, my king. Yeah, probably not worth letting him do that. Let's just develop. c3, e5 maybe at some point. Don't have to rush it. Really liking the look of this f5 stab at some point too. Could try that here, but it feels premature. Maybe a g5 type move too? That'd be cool. That would be nice. G5, going for all the squares. Yeah, a little tempting to take an F5, but I, I don't think... Um, you know, he might sack an exchange even. It's probably not worth trying to get too crazy like that. G5, what happens if he takes twice? I mean, Rook takes H2, but he takes D8. Might not be quite ready for g5. Yeah, probably not quite ready. Again, I'm thinking about e5, king b8 type moves. Uh, just doubling. I think I'm just going to double. I mean, I there might be better ways to play this, but let's just go for the doubling. Because if he puts his bishop on e3, that interferes with his ability to defend. So I don't have to get too, too concrete yet. g5 was very tempting there. I mean, I guess I can try it on the next move, so <laughs> I still might go for it, but... Because at least now, g5, take, take, bishop takes, he's not going to be hitting my rook on d8. That's the point. So he plays g5. Okay. Really wasn't expecting that, but all right. Let's see what happens. He can take with a queen? Hmm. So h2 is hanging, but so is g7. Let's see what he's got. I think this is defended enough. I mean, certainly he's looking at knight takes b5, knight takes e6. Those shouldn't work, though, because I can always take my king. He plays e5. Yeah, he's really forcing the pace here. Makes sense. He's behind in the match, so he's got to do something. So I'm going to take and then probably play e5. If he plays bishop f4, I feel like queen d8 is sufficient, among other moves. Yeah, let's play e5. Knight goes back. Okay, I can take and then play bishop e4. Just visually, that, that looks like a really annoying move for him to deal with. And I think also, uh, from a time management standpoint, 
This looks very good too. So let's go for that. Can play queen g4 perhaps? And then I could take c2 and take h2, but I might want, want more with my light squares. Okay, now queen g4 is, is definitely a threat, so beware. Beware. Yeah, let's go here. I can maybe take e5, but I think... Oh, no, I can't take there because that's covered by the queen. Okay. Maybe rook e8 if he takes e5? Still looks very risky for him, even with a capture, because he's almost in like an eternal pin here. So really should be tough for him to navigate. I think even just like bishop g6, something like that. So tough for him to move. Rook d2, uh, maybe my rook coming in. Let's go here. Um, Bishop e3 looks like it should be winning here. I has a check on g4. Be careful. Let's take. Check. Try to figure out how I win this most easily. <laughs> I'm going to go win c3. Or try to. Or f6, I mean. Oh, I really got to watch my time here. Yikes. Terrible, terrible time management. Didn't notice how low I was. Okay, somehow I managed to get into a good end game out of this, which is quite remarkable. Yeah, that, this was a terrible game. But let's just not blow it now, because I am winning. Okay. Not sure why he did that, but... <laughs> okay, I completely blew my advantage in that game. That was pretty bad. I feel like if he would have played bishop f4 in that time scramble... I might have been dead meat. Let's say like right here, bishop f4. Threaten queen b8. I would have been in trouble. So, okay, we're taking a short break now, and we're going to play the next time control. 45 minutes of 3 plus 1. So I will sign off. Yeah, not happy with the way I played this game. I'm going to try to continue this strategy, though, playing solid. He's giving me opportunities. I just have to seize them when they come up. So... Thank you guys for watching this first part of the match against International Master David Bruce. Be back soon. Bye.